Thanks again for watching my chronic illness journey and congratulations for making it to part two. In this section, I discuss the struggles of my early 20s and the lead up to my Lyme diagnosis. I went to college in fall of 2010 and my fatigue just continued to worsen. I was only exercising every other day. I went from being a competitive dancer, like dance mom style, to only being able to exercise for 30 minutes every other day. I slept every available moment. I was only occasionally social because I just was tired all the time. And I had worsening depression, hopelessness, mood swings, and I thought I was doing all the right things, you know? I was going to therapy when I was in Orlando. I felt like I was trying to eat pretty healthily. I wasn't like super clean, but I was eating better than my peers, that's for sure. I felt like I was having my priorities in order, and they just didn't ref like my my life and my body just did not reflect those things i had extremely persistent viral infections colds bronchitis chronic cough i was in the infirmary like every two months um because i was sick with something back then they called it the flagler funk and it's just a viral infection that everybody gets except i would get it two or three times a semester and i would get ear infections all the time um and so you can imagine that these things exhausted my adrenals and made me more tired so i started getting prescribed ritalin provigil and using caffeine and green tea all the time just to stay awake if i was not on a stimulant i was not awake in spring 2011 so i'm still living in the dorm at this point i get a dairy allergy diagnosis from my gp we asked her for a test because my young cousins at that time had just been tested and confirmed with dairy and egg allergies my brother and i got tested turns out i'm allergic to dairy and so is he within two weeks of giving up dairy in like February 2011, I lost 10 or 15 pounds without doing anything and, well, anything different. I was still exercising every other day. I hadn't changed anything except the dairy thing and I felt so much better. I had more energy. I was sleeping better. Like it seemed to get a little bit better at that time. By fall 2011, I had constant heavy stress. I was surrounded by the wrong kinds of people. I was eating poorly. I had lots of distractions and my inflammation was stagnating but definitely got to a point where i mean a comfortable weight for me is like 125 back then i was up to almost 160 pounds it seemed like no matter what i did i could not get it off if you think about it it was really adrenal fatigue and food sensitivities getting worse making me more inflamed from january 2012 to may 2013 is what i'm about to talk about but i was definitely eating the wrong kinds of foods and causing a lot of inflammation and it just spiraled out of control i thought i'm just fat um the bdd mindset really sunk its teeth in super deep at this point and just held on to me for the next few years in summer 2012 i went on to study abroad to italy with some other students from my school. There was contaminated food and I didn't get any rest. I, even though realized that I was in one of the most beautiful places in the world, at the prime of my life, I still hated myself and I didn't want to be there and I didn't want to be around anyone and all I wanted to do was sleep. After like the third day of that trip, I was just like done. I had no patience for anyone. I was totally overstimulated. I'm glad that I went, but at the time i was just so messed up that i could not appreciate anything that was happening around me and i still hated myself despite doing all the right things and being in the right place at the right time i knew that it was time to maybe start to do something about it but i was still in denial about telling other people about it i up to this point had just hoped that it would pass but now I was getting to the mindset where like, okay, this is a serious problem and it's not gonna get any better. And I'm talking about my mental health. I thought that all the fatigue and the physical symptoms were just me being a baby for my mental health issues. So I just had this mindset of suck it up, suck it up, suck it up. And like 
For ME patients, sucking it up is literally the worst thing that you can do because you're just going to make it worse. And worse I was. <laughs> After my study abroad, I was working 30 hours a week on high energy sales. I was outside in the heat for eight hours at a time. By fall 2012, I was so ill that I tried to compensate with a vegan, vegan diet, calorie counting, um, and an inappropriate relationship with food kind of like developed after that because it was almost more convenient to say I'm vegan than I can't have dairy you know what I mean the inappropriate relationship with food led to over exercising I had dropped down to 118 pounds and while that's not a dangerous weight for me on the surface level it was dangerous in the sense that I still had a lot of inflammation and I perceived it as fat and I was cutting back and cutting back and cutting back and I was cutting back to like 800 calories a day. Even when I increased the amount of food I was eating, I could not increase the amount of weights that I was lifting. I still could only use 5 to 10 pound weights and I just was a weakling. <laughs> Surprise! So I was drinking a pot of coffee a day and I would not get out of bed unless the coffee was already being made when I woke up, like on the auto timer. My prescription stimulants were mine, um, but that doesn't mean they were good for me, you know? At this point, I also had more responsibility at school, so I took more stimulants and that gave me more stress, and then my mental health started to really tumble down the hill, and I saw a string of mental health professionals, three therapists, two psychiatrists, and I was overprescribed and misunderstood. I was being overprescribed so much Zoloft. I felt like a zombie. I gained weight back, which was really bad for my mental health. I had one therapist at the school's counseling center that said to me, I free you from this illness. I release you. You don't say that to someone with a mental illness. And at this point, I had been diagnosed with anxiety and depression. Unbelievable. I was not suicidal before I started taking that, those medications. I was on Buspar and Zoloft, and I was on a lot of it. I have a friend that is, like, much bigger than me. Like, as a person, he's just... he's First of all, he's male. And then also, he just has more body than I do. And we were on the same dose. It was working for him and sucking the life out of me. And that's when I knew that there was something wrong. The end of spring into the summer of 2013 was when I had my first mental breakdown. Like, four real Z's, really bad. I ended a long-term relationship. It was my last semester as a full-time student. I lost a bunch of my friends for many reasons. I was super miserable, and I was recognizing that I was miserable, but I was still in denial about how miserable I was, about how deep the self-loathing and self-hatred went. When I finally let myself feel those things, I could feel it just like deep in my, the pit of my stomach, like at the core of your soul. And I could not get out of bed. I had severe fatigue. I would just come home from class, drag myself to class, come home from class, get in the bed, exhale, and stay there until the next day I had to go to class. And it was, that's not how I am. I'm not that kind of person. I'm a busybody, I'm everywhere. I've got like a schedule where like, I used to plan my schedule by the hour. And at this point, my service dog, Daisy, who went with me to limited places at school and did tasks at home at school, um, she ended up having to retire because she just couldn't keep up anymore. That was really devastating for me, retiring Daisy. I just felt like I could never catch up no matter what I did. I could never be like, okay, I can take a breath. I always felt like there was something I needed to do because I couldn't keep up in the first place. I slacked in every area of my life and the whole time I just kept blaming myself because all the self-help books do that. They say, this is your fault. If, you're, if you can't do this, you're your problem and you're your solution. And all these things that were just messing up my brain like messing up my thoughts and like making me think of myself in a way that I shouldn't have been because I should have been more gentle on myself and sooner realized that something isn't right here but because I had inflammation in my brain because I had 
an upbringing of being dismissed because I had an abusive relationship where I was constantly dismissed because I surrounded myself with people who did not appreciate me. It was difficult for me to recognize. And I'm not blaming it on anyone, but there are still reasons why things happen. And I'm not like, this person did this to me and that's why I was sick. That's not true. This person did this thing to me and that's why I could allow myself to remain in denial about how sick I was and continue to just accept mediocrity as something that I just had to deal with, that I would never amount to anything because I just was a weakling and I just wasn't ever going to be good enough. Anywho, that's like where I was mentally. It's important to like stop and say those things. Fall, winter 2013, I was back to classes part-time, taking good classes, like taking my senior seminar class um, for the first time. I took it a, a couple of times. <laughs> I was um, still having anxiety attacks before tests. So I would go to the academic dean of the school, God bless him, and I would say, hey, I had an anxiety attack and I couldn't go to my test, can I please have an excuse absence? And he would look at my grades, which were excellent, and he would say, yeah, sure, of course. And so then I just ended up building rapport with my professors that I, I have mental health issues um, that are active now. Because before, they just like knew that I had it and like it wasn't affecting my schoolwork, but when it started to affect my schoolwork, some of them were very understanding and one in particular that I really looked up to looked me dead in the eye and said, you know, life isn't going to stop coming hard and fast on you. Or life doesn't stop coming hard and fast at you. That's what she said. And it just broke me. Like, big time broke me. And I thought that the one mentor that I could depend on to be understanding during this time where I didn't know what was going on and I was looking for direction would try and help me than just say, suck it up. It was just someone that really meant a lot to me that didn't believe me when I told her that things were, that there was something else wrong. I was still having such a difficult time despite feeling like I was doing everything right. I took time back from school, I was taking care of myself, I was eating well, I was making sure that I was resting, and I still could not keep up no matter what I did. Hey, thanks for watching part two. The final part of my chronic illness journey so far is linked down below.